Hi there, Phil Simborg from the Backgammon Learning Center. In the past two weeks, to my knowledge, Pasco Gammon has been played in 14 different countries by my students, and they've played uh, against friends, and they've played against Extreme Gammon, and those are just the ones that I know about. And of course, there's a lot of other people other than my students that are playing this new fun version uh, variation of Backgammon. I invented it and made it named it after Jim Pasco, who I think is one of the great players of all time, one of the greatest backgammon players of all time, uh, one of the greatest back game players of all time, and he's also a very good friend of mine. And I thought the name deserved it, and he proved up to the task. He's played this game. This is the starting position you're looking at. He's played this game against extreme gammon from both sides <clears throat> and has a winning record from both sides. Uh, so that proves that a human can play better than extreme gammon in this type of a complicated back game situation and um, it's not true of normal backgammon I think most people will agree uh, I don't think there are too many people in the world that would be willing to bet on extreme gammon against even mochi uh, or any of the top players in the world so it's just a lot of fun it's great practice um, there are even people who've held uh, Pasco gammon tournaments I actually held one at Jim Pasco's house one time, I think we had four or five world champions in the room, several in, of the top players in the world from all over the world, and we played seven-point matches with Pasco Gammon. Guess who made it to the finals? It's not a coincidence that it was Mochi and Victor Ashkenazi, two of the very top players of the world. So that really shows you what a skill game this is. And, of course, I have played this game against Mochi, against Victor, against... Uh, many of the best players in the world and I'm a pretty good player I really worked at this game well and I can't beat them they're better than me and they, this really is a game of incredible skill and you use your your uh, uh, you have to throw a lot of what you know is standard out the window and be very imaginative and creative let me just play one game and show you what I mean I'm gonna the the rules are very simple you start in this position red goes first and doubles count and you play with a normal cube you can play a match and take turns on who gets which side or you can play the loser of the game gets his pick I kinda like that myself uh, according to Extreme Gammon Red has the advantage here but uh, that's assuming everybody knows how to play properly and use the cube properly which I doubt uh, we don't know if anybody really does but again I'll put my money on Jim Pasco uh, so here's what we do we just play from the position first I'm gonna hit control C so I can start all over if I mess up or if it's a crazy game so I go set up play from position. I'm going to be red and I'll be go first and I'll play against uh, uh, the computer. Uh, please don't look at the PRs. <laughs> don't look at anybody's PR when they play this game. So I'm going to make the screen bigger for your benefit. Control Alt F gives me a full screen and I don't have to look at my blunders. 4-3. I'm going to have a little fun here. I'm not going to try and explain every play. It's all about timing and not letting your opponent have a well-timed back game. And blue, of course, has an incredibly well-timed back game. A lot of people might be surprised at the play blue just made, not making this five point. These kinds of plays are very, very common. Uh, I'm going to have a little fun here. The idea is just be loose and have fun and people don't get killed. Um, how am I going to stop blue from having a great back game? I have no idea. I'm going to see how it plays out. Maybe I can get him to crash. Look, he converted to a 1-3 back game. I'm not sure I would have done that. I'm not sure I would do half the plays that Extreme Gammon makes. That's part of the fun of the game. Um, you'd have to roll out for a long time just about every play, and even then, you can't be sure that XG will give you the answer. And I love XG. I helped uh, market it and helped Xavier uh, with a lot of the features. And um, I mean, I'm a big, big proponent of, of XG. I did a lot of work to convince people it was better than the previous bots out there, and I love it, but it just isn't as good as top human beings in really, really complicated back games like this. And I'm not saying I'm better than XG either. I don't know. My record is actually pretty close. I've done pretty well. And I think it's largely because XG gives away a lot of equity on the cube. It really doesn't realize that you almost never lose your market to a big back game. <laughs> All right, what am I going to do here? <laughs> Often with two humans playing, you'll see large cubes. See, eight cubes, 16 cubes are not that uncommon. 
All right, should I try to go forward and hit? I think so. I've got a three-point board. I hate giving up the midpoint, but this is some kind of an anchor there for that some outfield control. I'm going to continue to go forward. One of my lessons on playing back games is don't play it if you can help it. Go forward when you can. And it looks like XG has the same philosophy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We got a problem. Who knows what the right plays are? I'm having fun, though. I'm going to hit and slot. And recirculate or make the three-point. I don't care much. I'd love to make the three-point. I will make the three-point. One, two, three, and anchor. Hey, looks like I got some kind of a game here. Do I have a double? It's got a two-point holding game with a tremendous amount of time, and I've got two, four, <laughs> a bunch of checkers back. Hey, ain't no way he's dropping, and there's no way he's dropping next time. All right, one, two. Let's make the midpoint again, even with a double blot. Look at that. Didn't hit. Didn't hit. Hmm, that's interesting. How many people would not hit there? Maybe I did blow cubing. I don't know. Let's make the bar point here. I'm going to be sorry I didn't cube. I'm sure going to play it big, though. Let's have some fun. I'm going to pay off. Is he taking this cube? Let's find out. Double drop. Then I played at 9 PR. That ain't so bad. I guess I he would have dropped for a while, huh? That's what all those plays were about. Let's hit Control Alt N and take a look. Yeah, I missed the uh, two doubles. They weren't blunders, but according to XG, uh, he would have had a small take here, and a I would have had to pass the re previous roll. So right here at this point. It was double pass. Um, anyhow, I think you get the idea. You can play this game a hundred times. You'll never see anything close to the same game twice. I've seen games where one player gets all 15 checkers back. I, I'll show you the starting position again. Uh, what often happens is red ends up in the back game and blue ends up going forward because red doesn't want to just play to go forward here and give blue a beautifully timed back game. Anyway, I hope you thought this was fun. I hope it was educational. I hope you try it. You'll enjoy it. Uh, try chouettes this way, but they got to be non-consulting. Otherwise, a game will take six hours to play. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you want more information about the Backgammon Learning Center, go to www.backgammonlearningcenter.com. 25 teachers in, I think we're up to nine different languages now, and uh, certainly well over 100 students. Um, and I think in the past, if you add up all the students of all of our teachers, we're talking maybe five or 600 students for many years of experience. And um, it's the fastest and best way to learn backgammon if you really want to take it seriously. We'll take you through the, uh, uh, through the ropes uh, in a very organized fashion. Very proud of what we've put together and hope you'll visit us sometime. Thanks, good rolling, and goodbye.